what's up everyone my name is Mitch and today's video is all about how to pick a university degree in South Africa how to choose what to study and where in South Africa um, so if you're a grade 11 or a grade 12 student right now and you're struggling to decide what and where to study uh, at university this video is for you I'm a fourth year computer engineering student in the Tux now and so I think I've got some really practical and useful advice that might save you and your family quite a lot of struggle and strife in the future so let's get straight into it, shall we? So my first piece of advice is to go and look at the yearbooks for your particular university that you're interested in. Now at the different varsities, they're called different things, but the yearbook is basically a detailed list of all of the degrees that the specific faculties at your university offer and all of the courses that you have to complete during the duration of your varsity degree to fulfill uh, that degree and get that degree. Is that a fucking lawnmower? Okay, I'm back inside now. But what I was saying is, go and look at the yearbooks for each university, which is a detailed list of every faculty that the varsity offers. And within that faculty, all the degrees that the faculty offers, and all of the courses each faculty offers that you have to complete in order to get the degree in that subject. So here I'm on Tux's website. At Tux, it's called the yearbook. You go here to UP, the yearbooks, whatever. You can Google it, and then like, let's go over to the Faculty of Engineering, and let's go down to undergraduate degrees. Let's go have a look at my degree, the Eng Computer Engineering. Uh, here's the program information, all the things you need to get in, all the detailed information about uh, how you need to do a school in order to study this degree. And then here, the curriculum for year one through four, and each course that you have to take for the, mod for the degree. This is really valuable and it's something I wish I had discovered when I was in school, because a detailed breakdown of what you're actually going to spend your days doing, you're actually going to be spending it learning about Newton's law, force friction, kinetic energy, you're actually going to spend it doing statistics, you're actually going to spend it doing this kind of maths and this detailed uh, uh, idea by idea, skill by skill thing that you're going to spend your life at varsity doing. This would have been really valuable to me at school, because it would have given me a much better idea of what I was in for, and also actually would have exposed me to a lot of the other degrees out there in the world. Um, there are degrees at the varsities that you don't even know about, um, things like informatics, stuff that I didn't know existed and that might be a really valuable choice for you to do at varsity instead of the usual ones that everyone talks about, engineering, accounting, law, medicine, whatever. Um, and to come here onto the yearbook sites for each of the varsities and have a detailed look at what each of the faculties offer and what maybe you can spend your, your future career uh, doing, you know, dietetics, be nursing, diagnostics, all these stuff that I didn't know about that you might be interested in. So at Tux it's called the Yearbook, at uh, Poch it's also called the Yearbook, here's the website, at UCT it's called the Handbook, you can go look at the undergrad uh, handbook for each um, degree, and here you go, here's a breakdown of what you're going to be doing in each course, in each semester. Here at Stellenbosch, I think it's called, I think it's also called the Yearbooks, yep, and then at Rhodes it's called Course and Curriculum. Their website wasn't as good, but uh, anyway. So those are the yearbooks. Number one, if you're going to take one thing from this video, go and look at the yearbooks and see what is out there, how the degrees actually might look and how you might enjoy them, and just go educate yourself about what the varsities have to offer. So the next thing I want to talk about is practicality. Take a good, long, hard look at yourself and be honest with yourself and your abilities. If you're getting 50s for maths at the end of a trick, there's no way you're going to cope with engineering at varsity. It's just the truth. The content is too difficult. And in the same way, if you are battling to get good marks uh, in high school at the end of grade 11 and the end of matric, you're going to circle at varsity to do a highly theoretical degree. And so you either need to do an easier degree or you need to go to another institution where there's not as much academic pressure. Because varsity is a highly theoretical, technical exercise. It's, you know, you're doing, uh, not, you're learning things and accumulating knowledge that is going to allow you to do a highly theoretical job one day. It's not the practical side of things. There's trade schools and entrepreneurship uh, for those kind of people. Varsity is a difficult exercise. And you need to be honest with yourself uh, as to your abilities and your intelligence because you're going to suckle else. Um, and in particular, I wanted to say um, you need to consider the, the return on investment on studying. Um, so I'm doing an engineering degree. And the engineering salary is really good, and I'm going to finish my degree, and I'm going to go into that field and earn quite well, perhaps. But a lot of the other degrees uh, that universities offer are really good and are really valuable to human culture and human society, but they don't pay well. And in the economic climate that we found ourselves in today, with COVID and uh, you know a global recession and all that sort of stuff, you need to be very practical with what's going to make you money one day and what's going to pay you bills. 
And in a lot of cases, even university degrees aren't going to do that. Social work is never going to make you a wealthy man or woman. Uh, it might be good and valuable to society, but it's not going to earn you a lot of money every month. And so you need to be practical with yourself that if you're going to spend a whole lot of money investing in a university degree, or your parents are, or your bursars are, or you're going to get a scholarship, or you're going to take on debt to complete a university degree, it needs to be money well spent and money that will yield interest in the future and that will pay you back one day. There's no use spending a whole lot of money on a university degree only to be in debt years later without a good job. I know we don't have it as bad as America where college is ridiculously expensive, but it's something to think about still. University is expensive. Most courses at Tux are around 40 grand a year just for tuition, and then you need to pay for accommodation, food, and all your other living expenses on top of that. It's an expensive enterprise, and so I would really recommend being practical about what you're good at before and going, into, before going and doing a degree. Um, this also, what I'm talking about practicality, also applies to choosing hard degrees. Even if you are really smart and uh, really good at learning and you can afford varsity, some of the university degrees that the varsities offer have very long roadmaps to accreditation and earning potential. Now, what I mean by that is um, medicine is a great career and you get paid lots of money when you eventually become uh, accredited and when you eventually finish varsity. But it's six years of varsity before you get there. If you don't have money for six years of varsity, plus maybe an additional year if you fail some subjects, you've got a seven-year window where you're not earning money and you're taking on lots of expenses. That's a long roadmap. You might be better suited to doing a shorter degree that starts paying after three or four years and then get into the job market and then one day pursue your career of being a doctor or being uh, something else in the medical sector later on. In the same way, architecture also is quite a long roadmap till you're accredited properly and you're not a junior architect anymore. Law as well. Law is one of the worst ones because you do your three-year undergrad degree, but then you do your two years, um, what's it called, LLB, then you have another year or two of articles, then you're finally, after six, seven years, then you're a lawyer, then you can start earning well. And so, in particular, degrees that are shorter but have better return on investments faster might be also something for you to consider. It's all very well and good being a doctor, but not if you only become a doctor in six, seven years' time and you need the money and your family needs the support in the next coming years. Something to think about. I'm in full support of hard technical degrees like engineering, law, and medicine, but just Consider what's right for you and consider the struggle and strife and the amount of work that goes into reaching those careers one day because it's not always as simple and as straightforward as it looks on the brochure. Now, a quick side note. Don't do a degree or don't do an easy degree just for the sake of doing a degree. Uh, if you desperately want to go to varsity to party and have a good time and have the university experience, there are much cheaper ways to get the socialization, opportunities, and networking that varsity uh, provides for a lot cheaper. Um, you can come to the strip every Thursday night and party, and you don't have to be a student to do that. Um, but I just wanted to mention this because there are lots of people who are at varsity just because their parents have told them to, and because they don't really have any interest in being a highly theoretical academic person one day, but just... It's a kind of done thing to come to varsity. And in particular, if you are struggling financially, don't do a degree just for the sake of doing a degree. And on another side note here, this one's for the parents. Uh, kids, if your parents are going to force you to do a really hard degree or something that you really don't want to do, I'd like to talk to your parents here. And you can show them this video if you want and say, parents, if your kid really, really hates maths, don't make him go do accounting or engineering. He's going to be miserable. He's probably going to fail anyway. You're probably going to have to pay for another year or two for him to finish this degree that he hates doing or that she is suffering and suffering through. And university degrees are hard. I'm trying to talk here, helicopter. <laughs> university is hard. And for a lot of people, university is not the right choice in life. There are many ways, even in our depressed economy, as I said, to make money running a business, learning a trade, working for someone that you admire as an apprentice and then like, getting into the business later and that, or taking an alternate route. University is not the only way to success, as many entrepreneurs and that have told us over the years. Um, rather, go start a business, get a job, don't take on debt and don't uh, spend money on a degree that your kid is not going to enjoy and is not going to succeed at. Because equally so, you don't want to demotivate uh, your child. 
if you are sending a kid off to do engineering because you think it's the right path forward for him, it might be very well and good for his future 20 years' time, but he's going to resent you for a long time. And I would argue that there's a lot to be said for keeping your kids happy and having a good relationship with your kids in 20 years' time rather than just chasing after money. Money is ephemeral, but your experience in your youth is something else. Now, back to the, the people watching this, uh, grade 11 and matric students who are trying to pick a varsity degree, opposite to what I just said, don't dismiss hard technical degrees just out of hand because you're more interested in some bullshit right now like selling, uh, I don't know, skincare products with new skin on Instagram. That is not a career choice. That is a fad. Um, and you need to be really uh, considerate with yourself now and really sit down and think, what's going to pay your bills in 20 years' time? It's not going to be skincare promotion on Instagram. That's some bullshit once again. I've got, really got it out for new skin. But anyway, um, you have to <laughs> start considering now because you're a young, responsible person. That's why you're watching this video. What, how are you going to support yourself and your family in 10, 20 years' time? It might be through entrepreneurship, it might through, be through a trade, it might be through running your own business and that, um, but it's probably not going to be through DJing or <laughs> something like that. You get what I mean? Don't dismiss going to university and don't dismiss the hard technical degrees like engineering, medicine, law, accounting, just because they are considered the traditional path and a lot of people have done them before. Lots of people have done them before because they pay well, they contribute a lot to society and they lead to very fulfilling corporate jobs. And corporate jobs in this day and age are very hard to come by and have kept a lot of people alive throughout the coronavirus pandemic. So consider that. So yeah, don't always listen to your parents. Listen to your parents sometime. <laughs> There's a lot to be said for sitting down and considering all of your options and discussing things like this with your parents, watching this video with your parents to make an informed decision because it's a lot of money and it is your future. But once again, it's a very exciting time and there's so many opportunities that it can be very easy to make mistakes or to make decisions that two, three years time, you're like, why did I make that decision? Um, on this note as well, if you live in Joburg and you're thinking about going down to Stellenbosch for Varsity and you can't afford it, what are you doing? Go to Vitz or to Tux. Um, I know there's a lot of people that want to travel and get away from home to go to university. You can still go and stay in res at your university uh, and still be close to home. And that's the kind of best of both worlds that I've got. I go to Tux, which is like 40 minutes away from home, and I stay in an apartment there. But I can still come home if needs be. Don't travel to the other side of the country just to be hip and to have fun and that. Every varsity in every city has its problems, and every city uh, has its great things about it. And so, you know, strongly consider what's important to you before you go and move across the country just because your friends are doing it or because it's, it looks like a fun adventure. On another tangent here, um, don't put too much stock in the opinion of experts. I went to an educational psychologist when I was in grade 11 to see what degree I should do and to see what he recommended that I do at Varsity. And his first choice for me was an accounting and LLB degree at Stellenbosch that was five years long, to which I said, mm, not really interested in that because I might have done very well at it, but accounting and law are not my strong suits and are not what I'm interested in. His psychometric tests that I did showed, me, showed him that I would be good at that, but it's not what I was interested in. And once again, you're the one who's going to have to do all this homework for the varsity degree. You're the one who's going to have to write the tests. You're the one who's going to have to put in the effort one day. And if you're going to be really miserable, just don't do it. Don't listen to educational psychologists. Well, I mean, listen to them, but just don't put too much stock in their, in their <laughs> words like they're a holy scripture. Um, also, I don't like the fact that every educational psychologist automatically pushes you to medicine if you've got good marks. The first thing the guy asked me when I went there was, do you like medicine? Are you interested in medicine? And I was like, no, I get very squeamish at the mere sight of blood. And he was like, okay, I guess we'll cross medicine off the list. And going back to what I said earlier, medicine is a great degree, but it's a very long roadmap. And just because you're smart at school doesn't mean you're going to be a great doctor or you're going to even enjoy being a doctor or studying towards being a doctor. And so, yeah. Take educational psychologists and experts with a grain of salt. But still, don't dismiss the traditional degrees out of hand. Okay, and another, another side note here. There's been a lot of side notes in this video, I know. But if you, after school, want to go and do a gap year, that's all right. If you don't want to take on the challenge of varsity just yet or you want some more time to decide what you're interested in, that's fine. But do something productive on your gap year. Go get a job, go learn a skill, go start a business, go read 50 books in a year and, you know, make online videos about them or something. Don't just travel and have fun 
and you know bugger around a bit and you know go party once a week with your friends who have already started varsity take it as a year of freedom but a year of opportunity to do as much as possible and to taste as many things as possible so that you might make a more informed decision about what to do the year after whether you're going to go un into entrepreneurship or you're going to go and start a degree or you're going to go pursue another route towards success or happiness one day just make it a productive gap year don't sit at home and chill even during COVID, I know guys have taken gap years and have been, and have been super productive. They've gotten jobs, they've learned skills, they've started online businesses. That's what to do with your gap year. Um, but back to the, my main points now. Okay, and that's it. I think that's everything that I wanted to say with regards to how to pick a university degree in South Africa. I wish you the best of luck in your journey on trying to find out what to do with yourself after school. Um, remember to consider all of the opportunities, university, the trades, entrepreneurship, um, starting your own business, um, you know, not taking on four years of debt and struggle and rather going and doing something else. Like there are t the opportunities are endless in today's day and age. You can go to t other tertiary institutions like Bago, Open Window. You can do a whole lot of Udemy courses and then get a job. Coincidentally, the job I'm doing now, I got from mostly doing varsity, but also strongly from doing a single web development Ud Udemy course, which has now taught me the skills in that that I'm w using in this job that's paying me a salary every month. And so, yeah, don't dismiss things like uh, online courses or <laughs> I guess all courses are online right now with COVID, but um, you know, online courses like Udemy and Skillshare, and I don't dismiss those things out of hand. They can also lead to great things if you're committed and ambitious enough. But at the same time, don't dismiss university. Uh, university teaches you a lot of amazing theoretical knowledge that humanity needs more of. And if you can do a university degree, my final, final point in this video is that I strongly recommend that you do a university degree if you can afford it, if you're going to enjoy it, and if you're going to put in the effort to do well at it. And yeah, I think that's everything that I wanted to say. Good luck. Hit me up in the comments below if you want to know anything more and go watch some of my old videos. I've got lots of videos about university, the university experience and thoughts, opinions about university, computer engineering and about uh, education, tertiary education as a whole. That's what this whole channel is kind of based on. If you've made it this far, thanks very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Cheers.